Hi, plug-in kids. Do you, guess who's behind this curtain? Surprise! Hey, kids. This is uh, Mr. Tim and Miss Clarice here today. And I want to talk to you today about the rainbow. Rainbow is beautiful. It's real. God made it. And contrary to what the world might tell you, the real reason for the rainbow, God made a covenant between himself and man and all living creatures that he would never again destroy the, the earth in a flood. So in Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 through 16, it says, And God said, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow, that's his rainbow, I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me, or God, and you, all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So now I'll get, give it to Miss Clarice. Hi boys and girls. So talking about beautiful, colorful things, there are some other things that God created that are very colorful. And there's another story in the Bible about a very colorful item of clothing. Can you guess what it is? Mm -hmm. Boys and girls that were in church this last week, maybe you remember. It's Joseph's coat. Do you remember? Good job. So Joseph and his very beautiful coat was a gift to him from his dad. And his dad wanted to bless him with this very special coat. I don't know if you can see it behind us. There's a really pretty version of it right behind us here with all the colors. And it was a very special coat because it wasn't a very common thing to have clothes that were so bright and beautiful. Most of the colors that you would see the shepherds wearing were just very dull, brownish, just basic colors because they wanted to blend in with the surroundings, not attract too much attention because they don't want to attract um, wolves or anything that would try to attack their sheep or themselves. And now something else that's very colorful that reminds me of Joseph's coat is a butterfly. You ever see butterflies' wings, how beautiful they are when they're all spread out? Well, when you think of a butterfly, you don't always think of humbleness. You think of beauty and regalness and just this gorgeous looking wings. But when a butterfly starts out, it's a little teeny caterpillar. And when you look at a caterpillar, it doesn't look like anything special. It's almost like a worm and you don't really pay it much attention. But that little worm, that little thing that looks insignificant or unimportant can grow into something that's very beautiful and looks very regal. You know what regal means? It means like royal and very, uh, like expensive and just, you know, worth your attention, worth your time. And all of that comes from a little caterpillar. Now, a caterpillar to become a butterfly has to go through a time of darkness and solitude when it goes into its little cocoon, the little, um, the, the little home that it makes when it's trying to change from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And it's by itself, it's lonely, there's darkness, there's no nothing else around it. And then when it emerges, all that you see is a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. Can you see this, boys and girls? Beautiful colors. All that from the little teeny caterpillar. Now, both the caterpillar and Joseph's coat are very beautiful, very multicolored, and the caterpillar starts very humble. Joseph was very humble at the beginning. He was a shepherd's son, and he grew 
to become the second in command to Pharaoh, which would have been like a king or a president in that time in Egypt. And he grew to be the second in command over all the land. And so when the caterpillar had to go through that dark time in the cocoon, Joseph had to go through a very dark time too. He was thrown into a cistern, which is a big pit in the desert that his brothers threw him in because they were jealous of him and the dreams that he was having. Then he was sold to someone else as a slave, accused of something he didn't even do, and then put into a bigger jail into the Pharaoh's courts. Now, you would think after all of that, Joseph would have lost hope, he would have lost um, all of his confidence, and he just wouldn't have been very um, optimistic about what was happening. And he, he, you know, anybody else probably would have got down in the dumps and just thought, you know what, if God hasn't taken care of me now, then I don't know what the point of all those dreams were. But he just kept going and kept going and was faithful to God. And then finally, the Pharaoh himself had a dream that nobody could solve and nobody could interpret. And Joseph had interpreted another prisoner's dream. And because of that, that prisoner worked with the Pharaoh and told Pharaoh about Joseph, which led him to interpret the dream that Pharaoh had. And it saved everybody in the land because his dream was very, very important. It spoke about the the years of plenty that they were going to have and the years of famine that they were going to have. So seven years of having abundance of all the grain and food that they could ever have. But after that seven years, there was going to be seven years of nothing. No food, no water, just emptiness because of the, the drought that was coming and the famine. And so because of Joseph being in the right place at the right time through God's hand guiding him there, even though it was a very dark time leading up to it, he was able to emerge from all of that and become Pharaoh's second in command and save not only everyone in Egypt, but his family too. Even his family that threw him in that pit in the first place, he was able to see that they had changed and he was able to forgive them. And then their family was able to come back together. And so through that, he was able to show that he was able to grow into something more beautiful. God had something planned. Even though the devil may have meant it for evil, God meant it for good. Just like this pretty butterfly. Hey, Pugging Kids! Now you can actually see me, not behind the camera. Guess what I want to show you? I want to show you this trick, but... I have only have one scarf, but I have another trick. I can grab out with another scarf. Ready? <gasps> it worked! Now we can show you. Now I can show you the trick. <laughs> hey, Pastor Russ, can you do it? Sure. Let me try that. Ah, uh, well, can you do three? No. You sure? You're let, better than let me. Let me try. This, it is kind of tricky, isn't it? <laughs> I give up. <laughs> oh well. See you later, kids.
Everything is possible with God. Anything is possible with God. Anything is possible with God. Everything 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 is possible with God.